I am showing up today for, <laughs> I'm, I'm here to talk about what the heck's going on right now. I'm here to talk about, hey, we're in June, we're in Gemini season, we're in the, we've changed over. Uh, the way I've been describing how I feel lately is if you've ever swam in the Pacific Ocean and the waves are so big and you're like 10 years old and your swimming skills are okay and your mom probably shouldn't have let you swim in the Pacific Ocean unattended, but she had a lot of confidence in you and you had a lot of confidence in yourself. So you went out there and the waves were a lot bigger than you anticipated and they were really powerful and you got turned over a few times and you finally made your way out and you're laying on the sand and the sand is warm and you're so exhausted and so grateful and so soaking up all of the stillness of the sand after being whipped around and you're just it's like you can finally just rest and you start to fall asleep and you don't even care that the flies are landing on your skin and you might get a sunburn because you're back you're on you're on you're on the sand I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but that is how I've been feeling for the last week or so. I've been feeling like I'm sleeping so deep. I'm completely leaving in my sleep. I'm completely checking out. There's no waking up in the middle of the night. As soon as I lay down, I don't know what happens while I'm sleeping, but it's deep and it's gone. And I'm... <laughs> I wake up in the morning and I, I open my eyes and I look around and I'm like, oh, oh, we, I made it. Wow. Yes, I made it. <laughs> That's how this is, this world has been feeling to me. And it's, it feels as though some of the rules of the new world are different than the rules that I was playing by in the previous world. It feels as though things can be slower and it also seems as though preferences are materializing faster so being slower and more deliberate seems to be a little more welcomed at least a little more um it feels better for my nervous system because when i'm deciding things quickly or i'm moving to preference very quickly it feels that the manifestation so quickly is in some ways whoa okay i i guess i've got to go with this now so that's how i've been feeling i'm not sure how you've been feeling but i've also experienced a lot of really a lot of physical changes in my world different house different bed different perspective different office different everything different, different, I'm eating different food. I have a different social group all of a sudden. Um, everything just seems like, wow, you've just reached the beach of the new island that you're going to live on. And what what's the culture of this island? What are the beliefs of this island? What are the preferences of this island? what it's a whole new life that's available now and part of that is if i get my rational mind involved part of that is now jupiter is in gemini jupiter in gemini is moving into a whole new uh, way of perceiving and i'm going to talk a little bit more about why perception is so important for the next part of the cycle um, I'm going to give us a summary of how perception falls into the manifestation cycle. I'm going to talk about why this is setting us up for the long 20 year cycle that we are moving into with Pluto in, in Aquarius. And basically, what do we do when we're in a new land? And we're navigating something as a whole new character in this new land. 
what are we, what do we do when we chose to come to this new land? And now we have an opportunity to completely reshape what happens in our lives because of this new land. So that's the overall message that I'd like to share today. I'd also like to break down the month of June and just talk about, we have a kind of a gross curve coming up um, in the second week of June. That's going to be really important to navigate mindfully. So I'll be talking about that. Uh, we're moving into a summer that could feel really fulfilling, really emotionally present, um, could give us a lot of emotional feedback and why it's so important for us to be tuned into all of the realm of emotion this summer because of what's changing over in the fall and winter of next year. Um, so I think that's a summary of what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, we, as I'm recording this, we have a new moon today. The new moon is in Gemini. So it really is ultra fresh. <laughs> there, there's a lot of really ultra super fresh energy happening today. And the primary sensation of this new moon, it's, it's coming into a square with Saturn. So there is going to be this interesting dual reality that we're feeling today. One of them is having to do with what our body prefers, what, what the preferences and desires of our animal somatic body are, and what our soul prefers, what the bigger picture prefers. And these two may actually be in a little bit of conflict. Our soul may have this big picture um, result that it's thinking about, that it wants to help us to shape through the actions that we take in the present moment. And our physical body might say, and I just want to lay on the sand a little bit longer. I'm not concerned about our sunburn. I'm not concerned. <laughs> I'm not concerned that I'm hungry. I just need to lay here a little longer and breathe. And so these two variables are actually asking us to be present with both at the same time so that we can understand that both the animal body and the soul urge, they are in union with each other. They work together to bring us to some kind of manifestation or result. And even, even thinking more so of one or the other is actually in conflict with the present moment, because if we just put our emphasis on what the soul desires, we're discounting what the body desires. And if we just put an emphasis on what the body desires, we are discounting ultimately what the soul um, truly longs our trajectory to be in. So these two can actually work together and they're not in conflict and they don't have to be opposing opposites. They can actually be holding each other and that's something really important to reconcile on this new moon today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how our preferences on either side of the equation, how those preferences are shaping what we're creating right now. <sighs> but before I talk about preferences, I want to talk about why preferences are so important. In the beginning of a manifestation cycle, and we can consider Aries as the beginning of that, even though it's a circle. Uh, Aries is a product of Pisces. Pisces, so I'll go one step back. Pisces is all possibilities, all eventualities, everything that has ever existed, everything that's possible to exist, everything that's likely to exist, everything that's improbable to exist, it holds everything. And from that everything, which can create a bit of angst, when we're in a Pisces moment with Saturn and Pisces right now, we could actually be having Pisces moments all through the next couple of weeks. And you'll know why in a second. But when we're in a Pisces moment, we're acutely aware that on a long enough timeline, we're all going to die. None of this will matter. We will be completely forgotten. 
that at some point we never existed and at some point we'll never exist again. And energy will just continue to transform and the way we label this energy won't really matter, that nothing matters. And yet, because nothing matters, everything can matter, whatever we make it matter. And so then all of a sudden with this interesting paradox of nothing and everything matters, we decide to make one thing matter. We make one thing matter. And initially that's us. We decide to matter. We decide to come into the material realm. And that marks the point between unity with all that is and individuation into the one, into the one that is perceptively separate from the one, right? So we begin to initiate this experience of something matters. I matter is step one, is Aries. I matter. And what we've been healing as a one through all of the eclipses, through all of the the Chiron energy, the healing energy that we've done is, can I accept that I matter? That I'm the matter maker, that I'm making things matter. I'm making, I'm deciding that something matters. Mars and Aries is decision. Decision is a separation between one thing and another so that we can actually perceive the two. And that decision to matter, to materialize, to come into form, that begins a cycle of manifestation, of, of understanding. So Aries creates that separation into matter. Taurus is a period where if we're going to matter, what's going to matter most to me? What do I need in order to matter? And so we, last month, we talked about our six fundamental human needs and Taurus it speaks a lot about the things we value. Usually we value things that we need or we believe we need. We value things that we think matter the most. And the whole season of Taurus, the whole season of Uranus moving through Taurus, the whole season of the South Node or the North Node moving through Taurus, which has been the theme for the last couple of years, it's tried, it's been pushing, it's been inviting us into the question of well, what really matters to me. So I matter. And now what do I deeply value? And now that I know what I value and how much I believe I need what I value, we move into the next phase of the evolution, which is a, a time when we begin to use the two hemispheres of our brain to navigate the outside world in order to receive more of what we believe we need. And usually I use a metaphor story involving human development to help us really relate to how this, how this functions in our lives. So let's say that in Aries, a baby is born and this baby matters. We name the baby. The baby is the child of, of two parents and the baby was born in a certain place in a certain culture, in a certain society, and the baby suddenly has a label put onto it that says, this is this baby. This is, this is Christina, and she was born, and she matters, and she doesn't have to do anything to matter because she exists now, and she's going to matter because she makes sounds, and she's alive, and just because of that, we've got to attend to the fact that she matters. So, this is Aries. And when I'm in infant form, I feel like I'm a part of everything still. I still don't have consciousness that I'm separate from my environment. So my brain is in a ultra open sponge hypnotic state, the theta state where I'm absorbing everything and everything is me. So 
my mother's emotions are me. My father's voice is me. My couch is me. The cat is me. Everything that's happening in society is me. Whatever the psychological climate is when I'm born is me. And this is why the birth chart actually has some gravity to us because the birth chart looks at that moment and says, wow, this is the environment you were born into psychologically. So this is who you think you are. This is the lens in which you see reality. So for the first little while, we just are all of that without separation, even though we clearly have a physical separation from our environment. Everyone else perceives that, but we don't. Now, the only thing that initiates us into understanding that we are separate is suddenly, because we actually are separate, we start to have sensations where the need is not met immediately. When we're in the womb, the need for nourishment is met immediately by the umbilical cord and the connection to the mother. The need for warmth, there's no, the temperature is relatively the same all the time. There's no set, there's no sensation of unquenched desire or unquenched needs while we're in the womb. However, once we are earthside, we feel cold, we feel hot, we feel hungry, we feel tired, we feel overstimulated, we feel understimulated, <laughs> we feel this discontent to a degree, and then we feel the reward of the need being met. We feel, oh, yes, the milk, the warmth, the being held. We feel, we feel that as a as a, a, a contrast to the need not being met. And that contrast begins to create a separation in the two hemispheres of the brain where, oh, there's a sensation of not completely fulfilled and there's a sensation of satisfaction. So this starts to develop our brain and our perception and we start to notice that because this space exists, there are things that we can do to facilitate a shorter period of time. We feel the need not being met. There's things we can do that seem to make the need met sooner, and there's things we can do that seem to make the need met longer. And we start to learn that there are behaviors and actions and things we can do to actually get those needs met quicker and get the reward faster. So this is when we start to get into the space of Gemini. Gemini, we traditionally call it the, 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 the sign of the twins. It's a double-bodied sign. There's a lot of mythology about the two twins, the two boy twins and the two girl twins, the boy twins. One of the, one of the boys lives on earth. One of the girls lives on earth. One of the boys lives in the heavens. One of the girls lives in the heavens. I'm not going to go into a mythology lesson right now, but it just symbolizes the fact that suddenly we have these separate parts of ourselves that get to have neurological connections that begin to form ideas and thoughts. And oftentimes in, in the story of the child, I like to talk about how this usually is the moment when let's say the baby is holding on to a ball. And up until this point, the baby was connected to the ball and it was connected to whatever was in the environment. So if you took the ball from a baby, the baby didn't really notice that you took the ball. In fact, if you put something back in the baby's hand, it, the baby has no concept that it's lost something. And it hasn't even, it hasn't even perceived that it lost something because even if you took the ball, the baby still thinks that it's you. So there's just no connection here. But the moment that a baby can conceive that I have a ball and a sibling took the ball from me, now I don't have the ball. And now that person who is separate from me has the ball and that person that's separate then from me having the ball means I don't have the ball. There's that discontent that I was talking about. So the just that, that first thought of, wait a minute, that means that there's, that you're separate from me. That is the beginning of Gemini. And 
if it's true that you are separate from me and I want the ball and you took it and I don't have it anymore, then something has to happen. I can do something to facilitate me getting that ball back. And maybe that's crying. Maybe that's asking for the ball. <laughs> Oftentimes parents will say, ball, ball. <laughs> and now the baby is, is all of a sudden forming a concept of the thing that it thinks it wants. And if the mother is saying, or the father is saying, or the caregiver is saying, mama, baby, this is training the brain to understand that we're separate. We have different labels. There's, there, there's two here. There's at least two. And so this is how we get into the space of Gemini. Now, why is that relevant for Gemini season? Why is that relevant for adults who are navigating these changing tides? Well, imagine that every single year you get a chance to be a new baby again. You get a chance to interact with your environment from a completely fresh and novel perspective. And what if when you did that, you created curiosity and openness, you created new neural pathways, you created new beliefs about the world, and those new beliefs actually taught you something new that you didn't previously know. The same way that the baby can suddenly learn the word for ball, say ball and get the ball. So this is an opportunity to open our minds and create new neural pathways, new beliefs, tell new stories about the world that will shape the way the world comes into form or the way we impact the world. This is the beginning of understanding how we impact the world. It's wonderful that we matter. It's wonderful that we can feel the space between me and you, the space between my needs being met and not met. And now we get to understand what the story that we're going to put into the world to create the world is all about. Most adults are not children. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm not saying all, but I'm going to say most adults have files in their system that they've been reading year after year after year after year. The thing is, there's so much information in the world. We actually have to be efficient. We can't be facing the world as an infant all the time because we would become very overstimulated and it would be um, expensive mentally to not have a file, not have a reference system. We'd have to be learning language all the time if we didn't have a file system that told us what basic shapes, forms, et cetera, actually are. So I'm not saying that a file system is not a good thing. What I am saying is most of the file systems we have also have a lot of baggage. Um, some of that baggage served us really, really well when we were five, seven, nine, 15, 20, 30. 44 last week, you know, like I was 44 last week and I had a file system that said, if this, then that, and what if I'm noticing I'm in a new world now and that doesn't actually serve the world I'm entering into now, because if this, then I don't know, maybe something else. I could try to recreate my old reality and put some clear, certain parameters around if this, so that I can get that again. But what if I don't really want to have that? What if I'm in the stage of my life where I realize life is very long and experiencing new things might be exciting for me at this time? What if I'm in a stage of my development where I'm not in a state of trying to swim and survive in the ocean. I don't need to be so efficient with my brain because I'm not having to use my brain only to survive. What if when I'm laying on the beach, the threat is over and, and survival is cared for so I can actually encounter little things like the crab or the shell without feeling like they're going to threaten my life? What if I 
actually can use my energy to have an, a whole nother experience that's not about maintaining my survival. And I hope that if you're watching this video, you're also feeling that a time of efficiency using the old files may have given way to a new time when you have the luxury to be a little more curious and invite a little more newness and novelty into your life. So here we are, partially new at Gemini season. Primarily, if you could just understand that every single time you have an experience and you go, you have an emotional response to that experience, that emotional response will send a message to, I like to think of it as a hummingbird, will send a message to the hummingbird and the hummingbird will pull on all your files. And if you find yourself on a new land and you're looking at old files right now and you're finding that they're obsolete, they're boring, they're not as charged, they're just not as interesting. If you're finding that in your life right now, it's a really wonderful opportunity to do some spring cleaning of your filing system. I don't need this anymore. I can, we can create a burn pile. I don't even know who you are anymore. I don't even know who I am anymore. What if I let some of these files go? What if, what if the file that said, I don't enjoy exercising and bringing my heart rate up? What if that file was because I didn't enjoy exercising and getting my heart rate up because I was in a state of survival. I was already swimming in an ocean, doing the best I could to stay alive and spending more energy exercising felt like an extra load on an already taxed nervous system. What if I don't even know who I am when my nervous system is completely well rested and completely nourished and completely hydrated? And what if this new version, since they're not in survival, actually enjoys raising her heart rate and exercising? So obviously the old file is not going to be relevant to the new person who's emerged on the beach. So <clears throat> that's personal example of what kind of files I'm sorting through right now. And I hope that there are files on your table around the work that you're doing in the world, around the way you structure your day, the way you relate to your children, your spouse, the way you relate to your body, the way you relate to yourself as an identity. There's 12 different places this spring cleaning of files can be showing up in your life. There's 12 different areas of life. And I'm willing to bet that whatever area of life you feel the most not excited about or not lit up about or the most over or the it's like the the most maybe blank or hard to access or um confusing confounding whatever place that is that's probably the place that you've had a software debug clearing and the opportunity you have now is to be a meaning maker based on what you value now. So what do you value now? What do you want now? What do you prefer now? Sometimes we don't even fully know what those bigger values are at this point in the game. And so it can feel daunting to try to take some kind of big, lofty, meaningful, fulfilling, impactful vision, mission, legacy, thing right now. Those things are reserved for later parts of the journey. And it would be a lot if we tried to impose that pressure on ourselves at this early stage. Remember, we're just starting to learn how to know that we want the ball and call the ball what the ball is. So if you're feeling pressure to be further along than you thought you should be, or be doing better or be clearer or whatever. If you any kind of better than right now, give yourself a little bit of permission to 
let these new files emerge. I promise slowing down right now will help us to move a lot faster in the future because we won't have to do a reconstruction of, <laughs> we won't have to do this massive reconstruction when the foundation and the framework is already up. We're just gonna deal with it at this foundational level. So how do we get in touch with what is present for us right now? Well, the clue is in the body. The preferences, preferences are so simple. You know, there's that meme going around from the notebook where he's saying, what do you want? And she's crying and he's like, what do you want? And she's like, I don't know if you've seen that meme, but this could feel, it could feel a lot of pressure if someone asks you, what do you want? Because maybe we know that we want something that's really well-formed. Maybe our, we know what our soul wants. Maybe we know that, or maybe we know what our body wants right now. And maybe what, what our body wants right now and what our soul wants is in a strong conflict. Maybe we want to be a prolific writer, artist, and creator. And maybe our body wants to sit on the deck quietly, drinking coffee, listening to the birds. Now, how on earth is the person sitting on the deck quietly going to become the prolific writer, creator, um, artist, that she sees herself becoming. And if we're trying to do like a balance sheet with like, is sitting on the deck going to actually produce this thing? This That's probably not going to be an equal balance sheet unless you understand that sitting on the deck, listening to birds, drinking coffee quietly for hours at a time is actually deeply nourishing and filling up a certain emotional, spiritual bank inside the artist that will allow her to be open to receive the beautiful, brilliant guidance to create something when she's ready to, not because she's pressing herself, but because she feels the divine inspiration to do so. And then she's got so much resourcefulness inside of her that she can concentrate on it for weeks on end and bring it to fruition with all of the energy she stored up. So that's the middle piece of this. What if what we prefer in our animal body right now seems like it conflicts with what our soul ultimately wants? And what if they're actually different stages in the exact trajectory? And what if we can honor both sides as an intelligent and beautiful map for bringing everything our soul actually truly desires into fruition? So what do you prefer right now? What do you really prefer? Do you prefer a pastry and some coffee sitting at a cafe doing nothing? Do you, do you prefer to sleep in? Do you prefer to call a friend? Do you prefer to be quiet? Do you prefer to turn on music and dance naked in your house? Like whatever it is, that thing is going to initiate a chain of events. And that chain of events is going to have the frequency of feeling as though you're fulfilling and nourishing the Tarian values, desires, and needs of what really matters right now. What really matters right now is that I exist. What really matters right now is I exist and there are certain things I prefer to experience. What really matters now is I can actually give myself those things and I can make a new meaning right now that brings that frequency into the longer trajectory. What really matters right now is that we can all tell a new story about the animal body, et cetera. We can tell a new story about what our nature desires and prefers right now. This morning, before coming live on this video, I was really struggling. <laughs> I was struggling because I haven't been making, I haven't been creating a lot of content lately. And I wanted to continue my trajectory 
of just sitting on my deck quietly and listening to birds. And I didn't want to talk about this <laughs> because I honestly didn't know what the hell I was going to say. I just didn't know what, what am I going to talk about? How am I going to talk about just sitting on the deck, listening to the birds? Like what, what is, how does this even matter? And in, in addition to this sensation, I also know that the soul commitments that I agree to are absolutely always for me. They are always, no matter how I'm feeling about them, it's not an obligation to show up and do these videos. It's an opportunity and it's a, um, it's a chance for me to have an experience that reminds me of something and gets me in touch with my soul in another way and helps to hold my animal body. Like my animal body was definitely like, I don't know why I signed up for this job. I don't know, like, who the hell do I think I am? I'm a girl that likes to drink coffee on my deck and listen to birds. Like, who the hell do I think I am? And I had an opportunity this morning to answer that question differently. The answer that came was, I'm a, I'm a human woman, whatever that means. And I am, I have, I'm like really alive and I have all kinds of ideas. And I also am so like willing to share them if I feel that someone wants to know or someone cares or if some, if someone wants to show up and listen. And so I said, well, how about I just go and see? And if someone shows up, then I'll talk about it. And literally someone showed up. <laughs> so Someone woke up 15 minutes before this call and felt like she wanted to be here. And this is the tiny little soul. It's like the little wink from the universe that says, see, because part of the story is we have brothers and sisters here. We have other people we share this world with. We have, we have, <laughs> we, I experience joy from connecting with other people. And I sometimes forget about that. I sometimes forget that I don't live in a space all by myself. <laughs> and <laughs> now that I'm saying all this, like what, how much have I learned? How much I've, I feel like, again, I've learned something new again. I have a new file for my system. I have a new reference point that I get to draw on. And I'm feeling all kinds of rewarding sensations that I wasn't feeling earlier today. Like the nourishment of connection has been established and the trust in the stories that I tell, the trust in my ability to, yeah, trust my guidance, trust my codes, show up when I'm, when I feel called to and honor who I am also and how I'm feeling. I was talking with my friend about the picture behind me before we started this call I was talking about how this is a, um, a picture I received from my friend, Lisa. It shows a bull and a bullfighter in an arena with spectators. And I find this painting really interesting and relevant because I believe I read that the bull has to do with the present moment, the animal present moment that we find ourselves in as three-dimensional humans. And do I want to go on this tangent right now? <laughs> oh, I could go all the way. I could go, I could go into a wormhole right now about this. Oh man. If you're watching this video and you want me to talk about the bull and the arena, and the last unicorn and Taurus and the human experience and what that means for our spiritual, physical selves, including mythology about the Minotaur and all of that stuff. If you want to know that kind of stuff and you're watching this video, comment about it and I'll begin creating content about that because that can get into a really interesting place 
And I'm not really sure that was the original intent for the video I'm creating today. So if you want that kind of content, let me know. Otherwise, it's just me and my brain talk, thinking about bulls and unicorns and minotaurs and mythology and the soul and hybridization and all of these things. So <laughs> this is an invitation for you to engage with me. Um, all right, I'm going to actually get back to June. It's 1050. I'm going to get back to the energy of June and just kind of lay out the rest of this month. So this week is, it's the energy of the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is, has hit the ground running. The Knight of Swords has a quick mind. The Knight of Swords is saying things without filters. The Knight of Swords is responding to stimulus this week if we're doing that very quickly we're going to get an immediate physical manifestation and response it'll be cause and effect cause and effect cause and effect whatever thoughts we're having right now whatever projections we're having whatever stories we're telling it's going to just happen the, the movie screen will just project it out and we'll be like whoa I like that. I don't like that. Oh, like it's, it's so fast. And I hope that you're watching this video. If you're having the experience, if you're having an experience, you don't really enjoy, I hope you're watching this video because this is the opportunity to say, I'm not really sure that that file is relevant for me anymore. I got to be more aware of my projections, my desires, my preferences. I've got to be more aware of the story I'm telling. Cause I'm not really sure I enjoy that story as much anymore or bring it on. Let's, let's keep how this is, this is amazing. I just keep green light, green light, green light, green light. I just keep, yes, <laughs> mini golf was canceled due to lightning. Cause I didn't really want to play mini golf anyway. Like, like, yes, I love that. <laughs> My preferences are materializing immediately. Okay. So whatever's happening this week, it's setting us up for next week. And next week, there's going to be a lot of squaring energy. It's going to feel like between a rock and a hard place. And this is going to be a week of massive mental growth. So this, the week of the second to the eighth is giving us all of the quick experiences so we can actually catch on to what's going on. Next week, it starts on the ninth. Mars will move into Taurus. It's going to slow things down. The sun will square Saturn. And it's going to say, is this what you want? Is this the way you like it? Is this, how, how can you hold both of these at once? We can't, if I always say, if there's a square, that's like two cowboys coming into a square saying, this town's not big enough for the two of us, except each of those cowboys is a part of you and a part of your life. And you can't actually kill one of the cowboys off. If the town's not big enough, the town has to grow. So whoa, if you find yourself in a situation where you think it's got to be this or that, or I've got to make an ultimatum here, this or that, just know this or that actually has to exist in the same place. So how can we grow in order to include both? So that's going to start on the ninth, slow things down, slow it down. The 11th, Mars will square Pluto. Mars is saying, I want to do this. I just want to do my old behaviors. I just want to go. I just want to do it. And Pluto saying, is that what you want in your new reality? Uh, your new reality, I thought it looked like this. I've got all these options for you. I've got all this opportunity. I've got all these connections. I've got this new reality that you've been connecting to over the last couple of years. Are you sure you want to do that? And Mars is like, I am sure I want to do that. And so how can I do that and create this at the same time? It's going to feel strong on the 11th. So slow it down, do some problem solving, use your brain, use, create a new neural pathway, investigate the files, take out the old files that said, well, then screw the new paradigm, or I have to sacrifice everything I desire, like whatever, neither of those is true. You can create a new story at this time. On the 12th, Mercury and Saturn squaring off again, cowboy saying, well, this is what I think is going on. This is what I think is true. This is what I think I want to believe. And Saturn is saying, okay, 
And is that something that your soul agrees to? Does your soul believe that? Is that a universal truth? You know, I often have had people create those three columns. Column one is what do I desire? Column three is what am I afraid of? And column two, the middle column is, and what do I really believe is true? Because what you believe is true is not the same as what you desire. And what you believe is true is not the same as what you fear. So the 12th is going to be a really good day to just revisit that. Saturn is going to say, well, what do you really believe is true? And Mercury is going to be all over the board. Well, I, I want this, but I'm afraid this is going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Both of those can exist. You can have your preferences and your fears. And also remember that there's some universal truths that will give you some peace if you can slow down enough to recognize that they're there. The 14th, we've got Mercury and the sun together in Gemini, and there's a squaring moon in Virgo. Now, this is a moment where both the sun and Mercury have just squared Saturn. They've just They've just initiated this new growth to our neural pathways. We get to actually activate the new neural pathways that ultimately we, we've worked really hard. <laughs> we've worked really hard to grow in our mental capacity. And so I think this will be like an initiation of that. Like finally, they're at the same place, the same point, And we're looking at some tangible results of the growth that we've done with the quarter in Virgo. Let's move to the next level. So we get to that third week. This is going to be, oh, so first week is the Knight of Swords. Second week is the Queen of Swords. Third week is the King of Swords. Queen of Swords rules the internal processing that we do. So a lot of internal processing, a lot of internal growth in our mental capacity, new neural pathways created. On the 16th, after we have that Sun and Mercury Kazemi on the 14th, on the 16th, we enter the week where we begin to really act and manifest again anew from the new perceptual state that we've dis we've discovered. So through that week, there's going to be a few squares to Neptune. Now, Neptune is this like... Mm, Neptune is not linked to the physical world. It's not linked to this current space and time. Neptune is multidimensional. It's past, present, and future. It's super ideal. It's the higher octave of Venus. Neptune is the place we touch into that's like, remember, nothing matters. Remember that. Nothing actually matters. So that means you can make everything matter, anything matter, and you can make Like ugh, when I say nothing matters, I literally also feel that the space of nothing really matters because from the space of nothing matter, come we can create matter. So we have a whole week on from the 16th to the 22nd, where if we get into that nothing space, that no space, that, that no matter, we have the freedom to put in the new beliefs that interface and matter. So you can see how this trajectory moved from like, whoa, the first week, oh my gosh, I have to reassess all these files. Whoa, look at look at how fast these files are just manifesting. And I'm not even, whoa, right? To, okay, if that's the truth, if I am making things matter and I get to decide the story and the reason and the energy and I get to, I get to make all of that up, holy crap, this is huge. That means I've got to look at, what I really want to experience and how I'm interacting with that experience in the real time. This is the second week, right? The queen, she's doing all the internal processing. She gets to the king and it's like, so if this is my story, then this is what uh, is going to, is I'm going to experience. So we get kind of a tangible, like solid it's like the maturing of the process finally. And Neptune is just holding us accountable to be like, yeah, because there's no rules, honestly. Like, so what are you going to do? And then we have the full moon in Capricorn on the 21st, the sun will move into cancer. Listen, 
you know, the story of the baby who the ball gets taken and all of a sudden the baby's like, wait a minute, if you have the ball, that means I don't have the ball. And if I don't have the ball and I perceive that you have it and I don't have it, there's a separation here. What just happened? So you, the thing that the baby experiences after that awareness is, <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm separate. What? If there's a you and a me and I'm me and you're you and there's a space between us, it's the emotional experience of understanding that we're separate, that we're making stories, that other people are making stories. It's the emotional, it's the moment in the movie where the character finally understand what's going on and you have that like, <gasps> like <gasps> emotional response. And this emotional response could be amazing cancer energy is whoa life finally sunk in i actually feel what's going on here i actually feel the joy of connecting after separation i actually feel the wonderment that i have some kind of power in this world to use my words and to create a story that i get to experience and receive like wow it could, it's the absolute wonderment. Like when I was initially mapping these archetypes, I literally saw someone have the awareness that they're on a material field, seemingly separate from source. And they finally get far enough from source where they realize that separation and they fall on their knees, looking at the moon, perceiving themselves so far away from the moon. And kind of opening up to, well, if I'm here, I may as well keep going. I may as well, I may as well see what happens. And that's when they commit to continuing into individuation in through Leo and Virgo. But we haven't even fully conceptualized that emotional experience quite yet. This is the this is the month of this year where we're conceptualizing that. And once we conceptualize it, we can actually feel the impact of that. And it will initiate a new process within us that will really put a lot of gravity, emotional and um, emphasis on our power as creators. And we accept that power in cancer season. And then we actually commit that power in Leo season. So I guess the final thing I want to say is on the 29th of June, Saturn will turn retrograde. Now, Saturn is going to have some things to say before it goes retrograde, and we're going to feel that primarily between the 9th and the 15th. Remember, Saturn is just trying to keep us on present moment trajectory. Saturn is saying, hey, you're in this game. You're in this field. You have this available to you right now, and this is ultimately what your soul is connecting to, to create into form. So pay attention. So we're going to be paying attention to Saturn's influence. And then when it goes retrograde, it's sort of like the manager leaves the office and Saturn won't be so pay attention-y. Saturn will be more like, all right, let's see what you do. Go to it have a good summer, play around, see what happens. It's the, it's the, you know, mess around and find out <laughs> because we've just been granted all of these special new superpowers to write our story and create from that reality. So Saturn kind of wants to step back and just see like, so what are you going to do with that? And so we have a, a summer to play around and find out with our power Remember, there's going to be July, or, um, yeah, July and August are going to be, July is primarily the most fun part of the summer, the, the most like unhinged playground. August is going to be, okay, okay, <laughs> we made a bunch of shit. This is great. Let's, uh, let's just make sure we really want all this shit. Like, okay, cool. And so August might find us like, <laughs> how long could this last? Is this really what I wanted? Like, this is pretty cool. And then September is going to kick in and there's, it's going to be completely different energy. Very, very, very serious, 
very, um, it's going to feel a little old paradigmy. It's going to feel like, okay, we're back on earth for a second. We've got to take care of all this stuff. We've got to, we've got to completely overhaul the rest of these files. We've got like a couple of months to do the entire like, like purge of the old paradigm because it's going to start again and it's going to be go time in November, December, and January. So that's my little like sneak preview. It's important to know where we are in that consciousness cycle um, and what is coming in the next couple of months, just so that we can kind of maximize it. It's serving us. I think things will get a little, I'm using the word messy, but what I really mean is uncontrived. I think things are going to get a little new, uncertain. I think things are going to get a little like, yeah, unhinged in the best way possible so that we can actually explore and experiment with these new magical creation tools that we have available to us on this new land. So frankly, I'm here for it. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm here. I'm, we're here. If you're watching this video, who knows how many people will even watch this video? Maybe, maybe a hundred people will watch this video. I don't know. <laughs> and, and I'm not the only one talking about this. There's lots of people talking about the way consciousness is developing. This is just my little spin or my little flavor of it. Um, I imagine it's happening universally and everyone's attending to it from their own lens of perspective. This is just the way I see it. And I'm grateful to you if you've even gotten this far in the video. Um, and for my friend that showed up live to receive all of this from me, I'm, I'm grateful to you. Um, anything else that I'm needing to talk about? I'll be live again in a couple of Thursdays. Um, what, what? Oh, the 20th. I'll be live again on the 20th. It'll be... The sun will move into cancer on the 20th. And so it'll be new vibes. We'll be reflecting on what we've learned and we'll be talking about um, a way that life is sinking in, like what it means, what's the emotional impact of everything we know about reality now. So if you'd like to join that, there'll be a link in the description box below this video. And I think that's all I need to talk about today. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time.